The Old Testament reading is taken from Genesis chapter 1 verses 24 to 31. Genesis chapter 1 beginning to read from verse 24. Then God said, Let the earth bring forth the living creature according to its kind, cattle and creeping thing and beast of the earth, each according to its kind, and it was so. And God made the beast of the earth according to its kind, cattle according to its kind, and everything that creeps on the earth according to its kind. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, Let us make man in our image according to our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, over the cattle, over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. Then God blessed them, and God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply. Fill the earth and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves on the earth. And God said, See, I have given you every herb that yields seed, which is on the face of all the earth, and every tree which, fru which fruit yields seed, to you it shall be for food. And to every beast of the earth, to every bird of the air, and to everything that creeps on the earth, in which there is life, I have given every green herb for food. And it was so. Then God saw everything that he had made, and indeed, it was very good. So the evening and the morning were the sixth day. Here ends the Bible reading. Thanks be to God. We'll now have the epistle reading. Epistle reading is taken from Ephesians chapter 1, verses 3 to 14. Ephesians chapter 1, beginning to read from verse 3. Spiritual blessings in Christ. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places, even as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and blameless before him. In love he predestined us for adoption to himself as sons through Jesus Christ, according to the purpose of his will to the praise of his glorious grace, with which he has blessed us in the Beloved. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses according to the riches of his grace, which he lavished upon us in all wisdom and insight, making known to us the mystery of his will, according to his purpose, which he set forth in Christ, as a plan for the fullness of time, to unite all things in him, things in heaven and things on earth. In him we have obtained an inheritance, having been predestined according to the purpose of him, who works all things according to the counsel of his will, so that we who were the first to hope in Christ might be to the praise of his glory. In him you also, when you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and believed in him, were sealed with the promised Holy Spirit, who is the guarantee of our inheritance until we acquire possession of it, so the praise of his glory. Here is the lesson. Thanks be to thee, O Christ. May we all arise to hear the Gospel reading. The Gospel reading is taken from Gospel according to Matthew, chapter 6, verses beginning from 25 to 34. Matthew, chapter 6, verse, uh, verses from 25 to 34. Therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, or about your body, what you will wear. 
Is it not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns. And yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? And can any of you worrying add a single hour to your life span of life? Why do you worry about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. Yet I tell you, even Solomon in his glory was not clothed like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which is alive today and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, you of little faith? Therefore, do not worry, saying, What will we eat, what will we drink, or what will we wear? For it is the Gentiles who strive for all these things, and indeed your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. But strive first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. So, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will bring worries of its own. Today is trouble. Today's trouble is enough for today. That ends the gospel reading. Thanks, Peter. Dear friends, I'm happy to inform you that uh, today's preacher is none other than our own member, uh, Dr. John Matthew. Uh, I thank him for having accepted our invitation, and he's here today. Currently, he's uh, a professor at United Theological College. Uh, I think he's a professor of Old Testament and, uh, of course, a part of a family, so he needs no more introduction. After we join in singing the hymn, O Lord, My God, uh, we will prepare our hearts to hear God's message. Shall we pray? and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable into thy sight, O Lord, our Creator and our Redeemer. Amen. Please be seated. Friends, it's such a joy for me to worship here at Wesley and to bring God's word to you this morning. Uh, I thank the pastor, Reverend Violet, for giving me this opportunity to share from God's word. I bring greetings from my parents, Reverend and Mrs. Verghese Matthew, who used to worship here quite some years back. And even today, they reminiscence with joy the time that they had here. I'm sure some of us who have been worshipping here for some years will remember him. And they are now settled in Kerala. But then they are very fortunate that through Zoom, they are able to see every Sunday, all of you. And they are very happy to be still part of this church worshipping together. I also bring greetings from United Theological College, where I work, its principal, its faculty members and staff. The theme for our meditation this morning is the goodness of creation. And the text that has been read to us has been from the book of Genesis, from the epistle to the Ephesians, and the gospel of Matthew. Just after the lockdown was over, probably in June, July, most of us were so fed up by being locked down at home that we just wanted to go out and we were looking for a gateway to explore nature especially during weekends. And we are so blessed that we are in Bangalore that there are a number of uh, nature spots nearby that we could go out and uh, spend time with our family and also experience the goodness of God's creation. And as we explored nature and God's creation, especially the beautiful uh, hill stations that we have nearby, and the river Kaveri and the other places, we were amazed and God's 
creativity brought forth in creation. We noticed that after the lockdown period was over, it came in news quite often that River Ganga and the other places, especially other rivers, they became so clean in some parts of North India that people could see its blue white, uh, blue color, the blue water color. And we all thought that yes, nature has to be preserved, nature has to be conserved if we have to get the joy of experiencing nature. God has blessed us with more than 3,50,000 species of plants and trees and scientists say more than 11 million animal species including humans. And we all know that nature around us, God's creation around us gives us the means for our sustenance. It provides us light, heat, food, habitat. And we all know that we live in a very interdependent relationship with creation, air, water, humans, animals, plants, we are all so interrelated and there is an invisible life-sustaining relationship. If there is a balance, a disbalance in one of these natural elements, we know very well that we humans suffer. We depend on God's creation for our own sustenance as we all are aware. Trees produce oxygen and we need oxygen to burn the calories within us and for our own sustenance we take out carbon dioxide and trees take in and take out oxygen. Trees, creation is our life force. Without God's creation we cannot live, we will die. But on the other hand, friends, we also know that we live in a world which is marked by excessive consumerism and materialism. We know that maximum consumption of natural resources, whether it is water, whether it is fossil fuel, is the order of the day. And it is commonly believed that unless we exploit nature, we cannot move forward. Human civilization cannot move forward unless we exploit nature, but at the cost of, of course, mass deforestation and the high level of pollution. I can just give you two examples of how humankind has, in a way, destroyed God's creation. Half of the world's forest reserve has disappeared, and very interestingly, India only has 16% of land covered by forest, covered by natural trees. And it is said by scientists that 35 species of plants and animals become extinct every day. And I'm sure within 100, 200 years, almost half of them will disappear. Therefore, friends, it is very important that as we enjoy God's creation and as we thank God for God's creation, it is also very important that we have an attitude of conservation, preservation of God's creation. It is rightly said that humans are the only species on earth which is capable of destroying all other species including its own. It's a gift, I don't know, it's a boon or a bane. We have the level of intelligence higher than other species, but we sometimes use our wisdom and intelligence to destroy ourselves as well as our own species. In this context, I would like to read Genesis chapter 1. Genesis chapter 1 verses 24 to 31 was read to us. And along with Genesis chapter 2 verse 15, I like to reflect on the goodness of creation that God has made for us human beings and also for all living things on earth, but also the importance to take care and to preserve nature. The late Dr. K. C. Abraham, some of you may know him, a very eminent Indian theologian, he has rightly said that, keeping in mind the present context that we are involved in, 
the present destruction of natural resources. He has rightly said that there is a conflict between the economy of human community versus the economy of creation. And in this light, I like to bring out few important thoughts for us to reflect as we meditate on Genesis chapter 1 verses 24 to 31 along with chapter 2. We see that in Genesis chapter 1 and Genesis chapter 2, God first created this whole world, nature, creation, and then later on humans as male and female. So we can see from the scheme of creation itself that God has given a priority and importance to nature itself. Let's look at Genesis chapter 1 verses 24 to 31. In verses 24 to uh, 25, we see God as being the creator of all things on earth. And then Genesis chapter 1, 26 states that, Let them, humans, rule or have dominion over nature. The Hebrew word which is used here, it basically uh, conveys the meaning of to have dominion, to tread. This particular verse has been argued by scientists, has been argued by philosophers, that this particular verse was taken as a basis for human exploitation of nature. Especially philosophers like Francis Bacon, he took it as a scriptural basis for subjugating nature for industrial purpose. In verse 26, we also see the word image and likeness being used. Now friends, this verse 26 is very important if you want to understand verse 24 and 25 and the first part of verse 26. In verse 26 we see in Genesis 1 the word image and likeness has been used. Human beings are made in the image and likeness of God. Now what does this word image and likeness mean? mean. It just does not only mean the creative intelligence that human have to think, to reflect, which has been the cornerstone of human civilization, but this word also gives us a very important understanding of our relationship with nature. Image or likeness can refer to the king's function and being something like a king or a wise regent who acts on behalf of God. We are God's image and likeness. We are being made in the image of God and in the likeness of God as God's representative on earth. We both, male and female, humans, both male and female, we are made in the image and likeness of God so that we on behalf of God we are a human bridge towards nature and we take care of nature, creation around us on behalf of God. Even though God has given us the freedom to have dominion, but that freedom comes with a responsibility. We are not only owners, but God has also made us as caretakers of God's creation, as being made in the image of of God to take care of nature. We human beings are commissioned to be like a very benevolent king who acts as God's representative over nature and therefore creation is almost in the same level as human beings. We are to take creation, nature as being co-created along with human beings. Now this is very very important thing my friends. We take our brothers and our sisters as our own blood relation. We, we sort of have a oneness with our own brothers and sisters because we are created from the same source. We have the same mother, my own blooded brother or a sister. 
we also need to look at creation in the same sense because we come from the same source god and we are co-created beings we are co-creation along with nature that god has made us when we look into genesis chapter 2 in genesis chapter 1 verse 24 to 31 we see a, a a perspective of dominion a perspective of being made in the image and likeness of god an idea that comes in that nature has to be ruled over but as a benevolent king but then in genesis chapter 2 verse 15 a very important idea comes in a very important thought comes in and my dear friends unless we read genesis 1 and genesis 2 together we cannot really understand god's purpose for us in our relationship to nature we see in genesis 2 verse 15 god took man and put him in the garden of eden and the word comes in to work on it and to take care of the garden and this is very very important god has made human beings to take care of the nature that god has created around us so i believe friends that the license that we have in a sense the freedom that we have to use nature's bounties it is also given with a very innate responsibility to take care of nature to till it because we are co-created beings along with other created beings in nature we have the same source of our own creation when we look at leviticus chapter 25 we also find the the festival of the jubilee and in this festival we see that god commands israel that every 50th year you have to forgive the debts of your debtors and also the land should not be used the land should be given rest there was a liberation given to people and also to to nature it is rightly said that nature can only meet our needs god's creation can only meet our needs and not our wants and if we have to experience the goodness of creation i think we need to treat nature from a point of being responsible very often uh, we have treated nature like the lady who killed the goose there's a very uh, uh, sunday school nursery story that we all hear the lady who killed the goose which laid a golden egg every day and we all know that being driven by greed she killed the goose thinking that she'll get all the eggs together the golden eggs together but the, there was no golden egg found we think that the 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 resources that are in nature are forever to be exploited but i think we all know that the context that we are going through the ecological crisis that we are going through it points to us that one day if you are not preserving nature everything will be detrimental for us let us friends be like creation itself matthew chapter 6 verse 26 to 30 says look at the birds of the air they do not hoard or accumulate but god provides their needs at their right time why do we have to keep worrying about tomorrow because god through god's creation he takes care of all his created beings keeping in mind the importance to creation the importance to nature the world council of churches of which the church of south india is a very vibrant part in its seventh assembly in 1991 the main theme was in its seventh assembly come holy spirit renew thy creation come holy spirit renew thy creation so there is a effort being made by the worldwide churches especially the church of south india through its synod level through its various dioceses to work towards bringing consciousness among people 
among the church members towards towards conserving god's creation one example how we could give back to nature for all its goodness given to us is i would like to share with you is the story of john wesley john wesley as we all know the founder of the methodist movement and during his ministry days during his preachings he went up and down the country on a horseback during the last half of the 18th century and as he went around the countryside he was touched by the barrenness by the sort of an ugliness of the countryside in england so one day he came upon an idea he he hit upon a scheme of distributing flower seeds to the housewives and offering prizes for the most beautiful gardens so throughout his life john wesley wherever he went for his ministry he distributed flower seeds to the housewives and the result can be seen very clearly if some of us happen to go to england we can see the result very clearly england has the most beautiful probably the most beautiful countryside in the world today one man was able to do it single handedly and i think we all can learn a very important lesson from him dear friends if we have to truly express our gratitude to god if we have to truly express our thankfulness to our god for god's goodness to us i think we must all go back to nature we must all have an attitude of not just exploiting god's creation for our benefit but to work in partnership with nature so that we all sustain and we all live together we also need to look at creation as being part of our own existence without creation we cannot we cannot exist the question that i would like to leave with you as we all go out from the church today is are we creating a better environment for ourselves and the future generation are we being responsible caretakers of what god has delegated to us to be caretakers of god's creation are we doing our little bit our part in in conserving in protecting nature and taking creation as our own brothers and our sisters as our own co-created beings i like to end with a quote by mahatma gandhi and most of us have heard this mahatma gandhi ji once said that the earth provided enough to satisfy every human's need but not for every human's greed and i think that is very pertinent for us today let us friends take care of god's creation not only for our own needs but also for the future generations the coming generations that they too may experience the goodness of god through through nature and i think in this way in way of conserving in way of preserving and in you know in an attitude of taking creation as something which is given to us with a responsibility and taking god's creation as something which is an extension of our own selves i think then only we can be thankful to god for god's goodness to us through creation around us let us pray o oh god the creator of this universe and the world around us we are indeed grateful to you from the depths of our heart for the nature and the creation that you have provided around us when we get up in the morning o oh lord we are so refreshed by the beautiful sunrise and the fresh air that we breathe and there is a a, a renewal of our life o oh lord when we experience your creation the goodness of creation we thank thee o oh lord for meeting all our needs through nature that you have given to us but help us o oh lord to have a sense of responsibility 
to have a sense of being caretakers of your blessings of your goodness to us help us o oh lord to treat not only our fellow human beings as brothers and as sisters but also o oh lord to treat nature creation around us as our own co-created brothers and sisters as our own co-created creation take care of us o oh lord and not only we but may the future generations that we that come may our children may the future generation also enjoy your goodness through your created order in christ name we pray